78,500 miles, a one owner, Tiffin Phaeton Diesel Pusher with a 300 horsepower Cummins here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, just coming in on trade. Uh, obviously being one owner, the folks had her since basically she was born and they built a lot of fun memories with it. And overall, mechanically, she appears to be in pretty good shape. I'm gonna try to point out the good, the bad, the ugly, the in-between and everything else as we go. But uh, overall, I'm for an 03. I'm not really disappointed with what I see here. If you're looking for a nice diesel pusher that's not gonna give you problems, but you're a little, you know, limited or just not interested in going broke on the budget, this one might work. Quick note right away, the tires look all virtually new, like virtually brand new Michelins all the way around this, which any, almost every time you look at a motorhome of this age, you almost always have to plan on putting tires on it. So that's a massive amount of money that you don't got to deal with here. Now, one of the cool things about a motorhome versus a towable RV is that this thing has to be pretty darn functional in transit because you're in it. And that's one of the benefits of motorhome. It's one of the reasons you went this way instead of towing a camper to get through the thing. Now, there's more room here than you see. I kind of just became aware of the fact that that chair is not pushed against the wall like it could be. But even with that chair kind of in the hallway, giving you a sort of looky-loo over the shoulder co-pilot seat, you can still just navigate right through this thing here. The uh, real tile floor here in the kitchen, it's one of those differences that when you walk into it, you step on it, you feel that difference. And something I like as we pass through here is how this bathroom door is clear. It really opens this room right up in here, especially as you're going through. And I try to pretend I'm a vampire. I try to make it so you don't really see my reflection a whole heck of a lot. But this thing, you're going to get a look at my uh, dad bod and chicken legs as we go through here. But enough about me. What about the rig? Cool thing, this is north-south bed which you don't tend to find very much in today's market, but one of the things that it brings with it is better cross breeze windows and basically the guarantee of travel functionality. So it's not like when you reach a destination, you don't lose your mattress. You don't have to uh, punch a slide out to get to it. You can just hop in, pull over, hop in, take a snooze, or frankly, you know, just anywhere you go, you're ready to rock and roll here, take a nap. So if this is the first time you've seen a Halid RV motorhome video, then uh, first of all, welcome. One of the things I'm about to do is what regular viewers are already expecting. I get elephants out of rooms. I'm gonna show you the couple things I saw that I think if you were a potential buyer, or if I were a potential buyer, I would ask the question, what is that? Why do I see a dark strip right there? Did it have a leak? Was there a problem? These are the things I wanna get out of the way first. So first of all, this is the only area in the coach in which I've seen anything that remotely resembles any sort of concern. And I think what happened was, again, this is an 03. So this RV has been around for 17 or so years. It's done pretty good overall that this is really the only picky thing I can give. So as we watch this RV, first of all, remember she's 17 years old because even though it's used, it's new to me. And that it still gets viewed and, and compared to a new RV. But anyway, I think that this slide was open and closed a few times in the rain. Water, when, when the slide's not completely open or closed, there is a little gap in the seal as it's working its way in or out. And as that happened, I think a little bit of water worked its way through here. Now, that being said, it, it like I can see, if I'm really pushing on it, a little bit of, just, just the tiniest little bit of sponge there, but this is solid. It is super solid. But, as I get here, I can stomp on it, and that's super solid. I said but, like there was a, a scary thing. I shouldn't have said but. I should have said and. So, everything on this is super solid that I can see. And that's the only spot I have found that is of any concern to me. Everything else in here has been maybe a little bit color or pattern dated, but she's 17 years old overall. It's done well. It's held up nicely. The soft touch ceiling liner is just drowning out the noise from the exterior. The TVs, like many motorhomes, have been updated to a more modern uh, HD TV flat screen. What it means, though, is that it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a TV that was not intended to fit into that pocket. So it's not exactly mounted. They just got pedestal TVs that they set up in there. So when you are... Um, traveling, you probably want to lie them down within their respective compartments so that you can you set them up and enjoy them at your destination. 
Now, one of the nice things here, unfortunately, it's at the time of day that I'm filming this, uh, my, my work here is kind of subject to the weather to a degree, and I've got wicked light pouring in the front of this, so I can't have quite all the windows open the way that I want to, but you get the idea. We've got awesome cross breeze windows over here. Now, in front of this, these are dual six-way power Captain's Flex Steel chairs, and there is a power step well cover that you can push a button, and it's like, you know, like the Starship Enterprise, and it'll make it so that you can't accidentally fall down that thing and break your ankle, and it gives you something to put your feet on when you are the co-pilot. Now, over here around our master control panel, this is on a Freightliner chassis, by the way. We have a 300-horsepower Cummins. I think I mentioned that. If not, there you go. Looks like we've got just shy of 620 hours on the generator right there. Uh, power, side mirrors, and over here is where you can see our Allison transmission, which is just legendary, and they're for a reason, and our uh, HWH hydraulic leveling control. So uh, everything right here is all wrapped right around the driver, and just since we've got that backlighting, to give you a better look up here in the entertainment area, you can see how, like I said, they just put a pedestal TV in there, which is fine. All you have to do is lay it down in transit, then stand it back up when you get there, and it's going to be just aces. Flip it around the other direction from there. I do like the lighter color scheme. I think that has actually helped prevent it from being too visually dated. It, it, it's very common, like when you see older RVs, especially towable RVs, where they spend as little as possible on fabric sometimes. Um, you know, when they have the blue flower print that looks like a flea market threw up all over it. That's not really the case here. Is the pattern a little more aggressive than you might find? Today you tend to find a lot of solid colors, sure. But overall it looks like, eh, ooh, whoa, hold on. I, I just spotted something. We're doing this in real time. Okay, what do we got up here? I got a little bit of contact paper breakage. But everything is solid and the floor is solid. Okay, so what we're looking at here, I can tell you from experience, this RV being 17 years old, like right now, it's very warm and it's kind of humid in here. Outside, it's very cool and very dry. When you have hot, cold temperature and humidity exchange, the contact paper on this kind of gets steamed off a little bit like in the same way that you would steam a stamp off of an envelope. And where you'll see some of this is like up here. You see how this uh, seam strip, this piece right here, it's kind of got a little bit of a bacon effect at the top. Well, that happened over here. And then it just got a little bit dry and it cracked and flaked. Good news, that's not uh, like leak water damage. It's a result of humidity accumulation over time. Now, one of the ways that you can help avoid that or prevent it from spreading further is uh, being very conscious about dehumidifying your RV. Now, when your air conditioners are running, they are dehumidifying. In point of technicality, that's actually all air conditioners do. Air conditioners are dehumidifiers, and the side effect of that is actually a cooling effect on the air affected by those. Interesting little science fact for you. But we call it an air conditioner. <laughs> One of the things that's conditioning is the amount of humidity in there. Now, uh, back around over here, I do really, really like how all the windows are fully trimmed and boxed out. And you don't see just a bajillion staples all the way around it. Not a surprise, though. That's just not how Tiffin rolls. This is a very classy coach. And again, that is a true tile floor. There's actually some replacement tiles included with it that obviously have never seen the light of day. And the solid surface counters in here looking good. Like most motorized RVs of this class caliber, we've got a convection microwave oven with a flush stove top below. And that looks to be, I can't tell if that's an 8 or a 10 cubic foot fridge over there. That's one of those things that I can tell a 6 from an 8 by looking at it, but an 8 from a 10 I kind of struggle with. We might be able to dig up some kind of old spec sheet on it. That stuff's hard to find though. Especially in RV, like the stuff that's kind of pre-2004 to 2006 is sometimes difficult. That's sort of when RVs realize that, hey, this thing called the internet ain't going away anytime soon. Anyway, um... Over here, our full walkthrough bath. I like how the tile floor persists from the uh, kitchen area into the bathroom. And you have the same uh, matching solid surface material here in the bath counter that you have in the kitchen. What's actually kind of cool, though, Montana does this in a lot of their bathrooms still today. This is one fixture. The sink, <laughs> the sink and the countertop, it's all one piece. It's a seamless mold, so there's no... Um, uh, yeah, well, seams where water can sneak its way in there. Now, around skylights and stuff, that's one of those areas that I really try to look at 
in used RVs to see was there ever a problem here and it's all solid it's not droopy so water hadn't got up in there and, and degraded the uh, glues that adhere this up the other thing with noise canceling ceiling liners like this is if this RV ever had a roof leak which I have not been able to locate I don't believe it has had one ever uh, it would stain that and there's there's no way to hide it there's no way to clean it there's no way to de-stain it that's kind of why it's called a stain anyway Big breeze window here in the bathroom, which of course has a, its own little privacy thing. And then, as we come over here, I like that they left that open for legroom, but they included a handy little linen cabinet right here. Not to mention, as we get just around the corner, there's linen, medicine cabinet, whatever you want to call it. Nice little corner cabinet here that they just didn't waste. And you're saying, yeah, but why, why doesn't it go further that way? Because they use it in the bedroom, that's your primary closet. As we come up in here, we already kind of saw the bedroom uh, in an, to an extent when we were looking at this, I guess you call it, in travel mode. But you've got these big breeze windows. I already mentioned that big uh, anti-vampire giant full rear wall mirror over there. Plus, we've got the other massive cross breeze window. You can see our side stands. What's nice about these, they're very large sized and they have uh, household outlets right on the inside of those stands. But notice that extra pocket of space there. There's a similar pocket on the opposite side of the bed. The bed's not exactly centered right now. It's not as large on the other side. But what I'm getting at is this is a queen bed, but I believe this is probably a king capable floor plan. Now, like we saw in the uh, front cab area, the original TV, that old boxy tube CRT television, has been pulled out. And you see that they've put a small flat screen in here that could fit. But down below that, that's where we're going to get the bulk of our long-term closet storage space. There's even a little double dresser drawer down there with those finger pull tabs so that you can have a little socks and underwear spot in addition to the closets and side stands around both sides of the rear north-south bed that we just got done looking at. During its 17 year lifespan, it has accrued a little bit of oxidation on the skin. It's pretty minor. I think that overall the folks did a good job of care and conditioning it. And I think in probably the last two or three seasons, once again, they were just reaching an age that being able to physically get up, down, in, around this thing was becoming more of a challenge. And it is one of the things that they struggle to be able to do. So it's probably where the oxidation comes from. A couple of the decals probably on what was the eastern facing side of the RV when it was stored, which tends to absorb more solar radiation, are a little more flaky than others. We'll look at those as we walk around the other side. But one of the things I mentioned previously is this kid's got new sneakers. Uh, you can see just at a glance here, this isn't all shined up. They didn't do this like for our benefit. These are new tires. Like, look at that, there's the sticker. These things, they I bet they've only got a couple hundred miles on them, not even a couple thousand, a couple hundred miles on them. And overall, like as we walk down the side here, overall the skin looks pretty good. So like I said, I think that if you gave it a good shine one time, it would gloss right up. Now this down here is one of the reasons the previous owners wanted to let it go. They mentioned that they were just having too hard of a time getting under the super slide to get to the stuff. Some probably these hookups being part of that. Now that's just kind of, that, it's sort of a, a give and a take, a push and a pull thing there with a motorized RV. If you mount the storage on the slide, like Winnebago tends to, well then it's easy to get to, but it's not a pass through. Whereas if you allow it to be a full pass-through like this, it's awesome because the storage is absolutely ginormous. But you got to get under the slide to do it. So it's a, it's a little bit of, uh, you know, both ways. As I mentioned before, 300 horsepower Cummins diesel pusher here. The, I think I mentioned the generator just under 620 hours. Now that I say that, yeah, I remember. Blinded by the light over here. We're revved up like a deuce, another runner in the night. Look at this thing. Whoa. But... Uh, weather Pro awning, which means it's a power awning with a weather shield, an aluminum shield keeping that material protected, and it has a rain sensor, wind sensor, whatever you want to call it, a weather sensor, essentially. Now, um, what's also nice is, like any electronic kind of thing, any system, it always comes through a hub on a Tiffin, so God forbid you need service issues. First of all, because it's easier to wire it from the manufacturing standpoint, units with stuff like this, rarely do you ever have to service it god forbid you ever did for any reason it's much much easier to get to and not only are those new tires those are new batteries 
Those are not old batteries whatsoever because they are sparkling compared to the rest of this compartment. And that is an inline uh, um, breaker, basically, an inline uh, surge protector. And that, as everyone knows, is the flux capacitor, which, as Doc Brown told Marty McFly, is the uh, item in electrical engineering that allows time travel to be possible. That being said, Halid RV does not recommend driving this RV at 88 miles an hour, which, as we know, is the speed required to go back in time. All of the baggage doors, on that note, all the hardware looks good. The latches, the locks, everything looks good. Nothing was fighting me. All the struts are still good. These are things I look for. Things like struts on baggage doors. People who are good at taking care of their RVs, they will replace these as they need to. People who neglect maintaining their RVs, these baggage doors will very often fall on their own if they otherwise. Now I mentioned this side of the RV has a couple spots where the decals are a little more weathered than the others, but this is, this is as bad as it gets, guys. It's 17 years old. A car doesn't usually still look that good after 17 years. And this is what I was talking about, that full, just absurd passenger compartment. Look at this thing. It's huge. And uh, old school TV phone jack hookup outside TVs. There you go. Double power entry step right there as well. It just obviously pops open and closes as the door pops open and closes for easy come, easy go. Like I said, 17 years old, but considering that fact, not bad. Like, I mean, people don't spend money on new batteries for a motorhome, new tires. Whew, that's an expense. With the, if they don't take care of this thing, I have a feeling that they did a once over on it and said, all right, honey, let's give this thing one more go. And when they got done, they went, oh, you know what? It's just a little too much for us anymore. So if you're looking for something where you want to scale down and work, do some summer travel, and you want to do some touring, you want to do the snowbird, sunbird thing, I think this would be an awesome uh, thing. Like, this is more than just, well, here's a coach you could take to the races and watch Jeff Gordon or whoever your driver is. I frankly don't watch sports ball racing that much. But the fact is, it's more than just that. This is something that's still... Uh, high class. That's the whole idea behind a Tiffin. First class built to last, I think. So give us a call here at Halid RV, hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck, and trailer package deals, or motorhome and coach and tow bar package deals would maybe be more appropriate to say. Everything in between, you get the idea. Give us a call. We do it all. So take care. Stay safe. Have fun. And happy camping, everyone.